you kind of alluded to a purpose, all right? When it's all said and done and you're dead, all right? Like you said, when you die, have somebody look after your kids, right? How do you know that you fulfilled your purpose? Uh, I mean, I, I guess if you're happy with you have accomplished, then I guess you you finished your, your, you did your purpose. Or... So if you're happy with how you lived your life, at the end of your life, you're good. Okay, how about, is that how you feel too? I'm feeling, <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you said your dad's a pastor, right? So do you believe that there's like an accountability in the afterlife? Um... Like you'll stand before God one day or something like that? Yes, yes, sir. Okay, and give an account of your life? Yes, sir. Okay, how about you? You feel the same way? Yeah, the same thing. Okay, okay, so do you think you guys will go to heaven if you were to stand before God? And why would he let you into heaven? Most definitely. Uh, I think that he would let me into heaven because of the examples that I'm setting for, for um, other people. Okay, your examples. Okay, how about you? Just living life right, just trying to be good, going to church, all that. Okay, okay. So do you consider yourself to be good people? Good person? You're a good person? Yes, sir. How about you? I'm great. <laughs> you're great. Okay, okay. That's confidence right there. Okay. So there's one way you can know you're good. All right, there's a little test we're going to go through, okay? I'm going to go through it with you. All right? Have you ever told a lie before? Yes. <laughs> have you? Yes, I have. So what do they call people who lie? Sinners. Oh, specifically, if I were to lie to you, what would you call me? A liar. A liar. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Uh, have you ever stolen anything, regardless of the value? Uh, mm, Big or small? I can't remember. No, sir. Have you ever downloaded something off the internet that you weren't supposed to? Maybe pay for it otherwise? Yeah, I, I uh, paid for, for a movie once sometime. You didn't pay for it? No, no sir. And I, you should have? Yeah, I should have. Okay, well, so what is that? Uh, well, <laughs> yeah, I guess consider stealing. <laughs> okay, okay. How about you? Have you ever stolen anything before? Yeah, like gum and stuff like that. So what do they call people who steal things? Stealers. Stealers. That's a football team. All right. What, what, more specific, what, what's the crime? What does it mean? Uh, a, a thief. Thief. There you go. That's what I was looking for. Okay. This is what got me. Okay. Jesus said, you have heard of old, you should not commit adultery. Right? He said, but if you look upon a woman to lust after her, you've committed adultery with her in your heart. Now, I've done that. Have you ever looked with lust? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. How about you? Yes, sir. Okay, so by your own admission, and you just said you're good people, and I'm not judging you, okay, just based on what we looked at. You're lying, thieves, adulterers at heart, and you've got to stand before a holy God on Judgment Day. Yes, sir. Will you be innocent or guilty? Uh, I'll be innocent, just, just off the fact that um, every, everyone sins and there's no sin greater than another. So, so you'd be innocent. Okay, how about you? I feel I'd be innocent because nobody is perfect. Well, that's true, you know. So let's say that you're driving, you guys drive, right? Okay, you're driving down the highway, speed limit's 55 miles an hour, all right? but you're doing 75. So is everybody else, right? But then the officer decides to pull behind you, pulls you over and gives you a ticket because you're guilty of speeding, right? You still gotta pay the fine, right? Okay, so if you've lied, you're guilty of lying. If you've stolen, you're guilty of theft. You know, according to Jesus, if you've looked with lust, you're guilty as, of even as close as committing adultery. So it's not like you'd really be innocent, you'd be guilty. Okay, I am too. I'm guilty, man. I've done all those things. Does that make sense what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Okay, that law, if you have never lied, then you would be innocent. But because you have lied, you're guilty. Okay, so being guilty, do you think that would be heaven or hell? What do you think? I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure. How about you? What do you think? <laughs> I'm really not sure. Okay, well, here, here, here's what the Bible says. It gives us the sentence of lying. Okay, Revelation 21, verse 8 says that every liar will have their part in the lake of fire. Ouch. And then uh, 1 Corinthians 6, 9 says that no thief, no adulterer, or idolater will inherit the kingdom of God. So if those scriptures are true, you and I, all of us, are in a whole world of hurt, right? So that means you go to hell, right? If God were to stand before us, if we were to stand before God, excuse me, to give account of our lives, he'd see us as lawbreakers, which is sinners, like you mentioned. Now, does it concern you that if you were to die and stand before God to give an account of your life, he'd see you that way and end up in hell? Does that concern you at all? Uh, it, it concerns me in a way. If you were to die um, and stand before God and he would see you as the one who had broken his laws and descendants as death well, in hell. You saying it like that, it kind of makes me think that's why God died, for all our sins. 
That's exactly it. So here's the question. When I ask you, how do you get to heaven? You're like, to be a good person. But that's not how you get to heaven. Mm -hmm. How do you get to heaven is through faith in what God did for you through the blood of Jesus Christ. God loved you so much that he sent Jesus into the world to live a sinless life, to pay the penalty of your crime and my crime on himself. It's as easy as this. You broke God's law and Jesus paid your fine. Does that make sense? And all you have to do is, it's not about doing good things. It's about living, uh, putting your trust in what Jesus did for you on the cross. And it's only through that that you'll be saved. If you think that you're good enough to get there, we just, we just found that you're not. Does that make sense? That's why Jesus died. And you've got to put your hope in him, all right? Now, would you jump out of an airplane without a parachute? <laughs> no. Not, not for any reason. No, <laughs> no reason at all. You put the parachute on, right? Because you're putting your whole hope in that, that when you step out of that airplane, it's going to save you from sure death. And in the same way, you don't trust in your own self to save you. You can't flap your wings, right, when you jump out of that airplane. You put your trust in Jesus, who is your parachute, to save you from the wrath to come, which is hell. That's why God did that. That's why Jesus sent his son for you. Does that make sense? So here's the point of life. Jesus said this, to know God and Jesus who he sent. He said that is eternal life. He said that if you find your life, if you try to go find your life and do your own thing, you'll lose it. This is what Jesus said. He says, but if you lose your life for my sake, you'll find it. Now you said you're a pastor's son. I think your dad uh, uh, was kind of probably sharing some of this stuff with you in his sermons and things like that, man, because he loves you and he wants you to see, he wants to see you fulfill all that God has for you, your purpose in life. Does that make sense? Yes, sir, it does. So how do you get to heaven? <laughs> you what you just hope. say, you gotta have hope. In who? In Jesus. In Jesus, God. once for all, right? Yes, sir. So when are you going to put your trust in him once and for all? No. Right now? Yes, sir. <laughs> right now. You feel the same? Right now. All right, you guys, you guys can I pray with you yes, about that? Is that cool? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, mm -hmm. let's just pray. I'm going to put my hand right here, man, okay? Yes, Father, I thank you for these two young men, Lord, and I thank you. For